Last time on Jesse tries to get rid of books. I can't get rid of it. I just can't. I don't think I didn't like this book enough to get rid of it. Yet I don't feel like I'm ready to let go of this book because I love the cover. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel! Holy crap, I'm kind of like blending in with the background. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. It's a floating hand! And if I button this up, it's a floating head! It's time for another video where I attempt to get rid of books. As you can see, I decided to get rid of all of my books. That's the end of this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon with a new video. A J to the K, just kidding. I got new carpet recently and that forced me to get all my books off my bookshelves. And as I was doing that, I was like, huh, there's a lot of books here that I really do not need to keep. And I have a hefty pile of books, my dudes. Hefty, 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 hefty. I appreciate everyone who left an encouraging comment on my last frustrating unhaul video. Cause I feel like that really helped kick my booty in the right direction of being okay with getting rid of books. I always go back and forth on not being sure if I want a collection of books where I've just read all of the books or a collection of books where I've read all the books and they're amazing. But I think at the end of the day, I would rather have a collection of books where you can kind of get an idea as to the type of person that I am and the kind of stories that I like to consume. I think I also have a really hard time getting rid of books that I've read because I don't like the read to unread ratio being off on my bookshelf, which is so stupid, 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 stupid. Anyway, today I am going to be sharing with you the pile of books that I have collected to ship off to either my library or my old school or a thrift store where they can do whatever the heck they want to do with these books and hopefully they will find their rightful owner. Disclaimer! Yes, I'm talking into a duster, acting like it's a mic. If your favorite book shows up in here, I promise it's not an attack on you. We're all different readers with different opinions and feelings. And it's okay if you love a book that I didn't love. Just like it's okay if I love a book that you didn't love. That's it for my disclaimer. Here we go. First up, we have an array of books that I talked about in my last unhaul video where I was trying to clear out my bookshelf. And these were the ones that I kept, but after reading your comments, I have decided to get rid of them. First up here, we have The Last Leaves Falling. I was keeping this one because the cover was mesmerizing me because of its greatness. But I'm getting rid of it because I didn't enjoy it one bit, so it's gotta go. Next up, we've got Solo. I was hanging onto this one because my ex-girlfriend got it for me and I'm a sentimental soft boy and I didn't want to let go of it. But I'm gonna shred that image and dump this book. One, because that relationship is long gone. And two, because I cringed my way through this book. I'm so hardcore, y'all can't even handle these vibes. <laughs> Then we've got Noggin and Highly Illogical Behavior. I'm getting rid of these because they just didn't do it for me. I will continue to read books by this author in the future because I think he's talented, but they just didn't reach my level of love that I have for his first book, Where Things Come Back. That book is just top notch. I love you, Where Things Come Back. You're my ride or die. Okay, moving on. These are ones that I did not mention in the last video, and the first one I have here is The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. I have such a hit or miss relationship when it comes to Kirsten White's books, and that relationship that I have is not going to stop me from reading her books in the future because the ones that hit it, hit it spot on. Like what would my life even be without the anti Darken trilogy? Hello Darkness, my old friend would be on loop in the background. This one was slow and nothing really happens. There were some great shock moments, but it wasn't able to like push off those shock moments and carry the story forward. It wasn't enough to save this book from flopping off my bookshelf. Next we have here, Wink Poppy Midnight. This one had elements that I was all about. Writing style, greatness, weirdness, it was full of it. Fairy tale vibes, they were present, but it fell flat in so many areas that those those elements weren't really able to save it. It's intriguing at first, but then the execution is a bit of a letdown. You get to the end of it and you're hit with, that's it? That's all? I read all of this for that? That's what made me really disappointed because there are these nice stepping stones to like really building up this great story, but then you're pushed off the cliff into a body of water made out of disappointment. Plop. The characters were just also not very fleshed out. They were very one-dimensional. When I eat cake, I want those layers. Who am I kidding? When I eat cake, I just want cake. Anyway, now I'm craving cake, so that's great. Next up, we have a total totally awkward love story. Is that the title of my life or what? Not at all. Mine would be a totally awkward non-existent love story. I actually really enjoyed this book and it's kind of got a bit of a twist on a romantic comedy and I would say it's rather, what's the word for it? Vulgar in terms of sexual content, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I've read it, but I remember being like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. While I liked it, it didn't really end up becoming an all-time favorite and I would just rather pass it on in hopes that somebody would pick it up and die hard loving. Together we used to be two peas in a pod, but now it's like we're leaves that fell from a tree during fall time drifting apart. That was a very dramatic way of me saying I like this book but I'm getting rid of it. Next we have Miss Mayhem. If you've been around on this channel for a while then you know how sad this book made me. I loved Rebel Bell which was the first book in this trilogy. It had everything going for it. It's what I would call a layered cake of a book. And when Miss Mayhem came out I was like ooh we get in cake seconds. But then I read it and I couldn't believe how fast this trilogy went downhill. It made zero sense and it broke my heart. The potential that the first book gave us for this to be a knock it out of the park trilogy was pretty locked down. But then this book came out and 
jacked everything up. I will be forever upset about this trilogy. Seeing this on my shelf makes me sad, so it's gotta go. Next, we have Descendant of the Crane, which this book cover is just so beautiful. I can't look at it because if I look at it, I'll convince myself to keep it, but I can't keep it. This book was actually a DNF for me, and I was like, you know what? I'll come back to this one eventually, and I'll plow my way through it, but like, no, that's never gonna happen. My interest for it has since disappeared. Where are you at, interest? Your interest has left the building. Oh, well, all right then. This is one of those books where you have to really work to understand everything that's going on. The writing style really made it difficult to kind of really grasp the magic system, at least for me. You kind of have to read through flowery writing because it's not clearly stated as to how everything works. And I think that sometimes that style does work. But for this specific story, it just wasn't really working for me and I had a hard time connecting to it. So it's gotta go. Next, we have Teeth in the Mist. This book was just so difficult to follow because of all the timelines. And it was kind of hard to differentiate between the different storylines. I often found myself having to backtrack and re read things. The visuals in this book were magnificent, but I felt like the story itself could use some restructuring to make things a little more seamless. Next, we have The Rest of Us Just Live Here. Great concept, not the best execution. It could have been amazing too. It had this clear path to excellence, but it just didn't reach that mark for me. My book love tank was not full by the end of reading it. Jacoby. I love this book just feeling okay about it. Didn't love it, didn't hate it. It was just okay. And I've honestly been keeping this book because it's beautiful. Look at that blue, look at that overlay, look at that beautiful text. But I'm trying my best to get myself out of that mindset set. Shoe fly don't bother me. We want books I love living on this shelf, not books that are just beautiful. You got that up there? Let's get lost. I have kept this book for such a long time and I have no idea why. Like I really didn't love this book. It was another one of those books that was just okay to me. I liked the road trip concept. That was fun. But the idea of this girl just casually showing up to these strangers and helping them deal with situations out of the blue without ever really getting to know anything about our main character didn't really win me over. I know it's fiction, but I couldn't help being like this would never happen. Ever. The Wongs versus the world. Speaking of road trip books, this was the most random and long road trip book I have ever read. Mind you, I loved the writing style and I will for sure be picking up more books by this author in the future, but the wackiness that ensued in this book was unreal. And sure, you could argue, hey, it held your attention to the end of the book, like yeah, but that was more so because I was like, where is this going? How is this all adding up? This is weird. You feel me? Summerland. I might have ended up not liking this book for reasons that are not this book's fault. I picked this book up in the adult section thinking it was an adult book, but then I read it and it was a full-on middle grade fantasy story and I was confused. It would have been all fine and dandy if it was a book that I was enjoying, but it was not my cup of magical goodness. It was more of a take a sip, realize its bitterness, and spit it all over the place kind of book. To be fair, had I read this book's description before going into it, I would have known that this book was not gonna be for me. Simple as that. I could have dodged the dodgeball flying in this direction. Instead, I got hate fair and square. The Trick, another book where I loved the concept but didn't really love the execution. I actually did a full video book review on this book way back when, and I'm not sure why I didn't get rid of it then, because why keep a book you don't like? He says as he continues struggling getting rid of books he doesn't like. Anyway, I think that this one was more of a personal preference kind of thing, because I went on Goodreads and there are so many reviews that are like four and five stars, and here I am pulling an sync singing baby ba ba ba. Quarantine. I genuinely really love this book when I first read it. I don't know if I would love it now, because I feel like I've changed as a reader. My taste buds are a little different these days, but I also feel like it might not have aged well, if you know what I mean. I also have no plans to continue this trilogy, so I might as well just pass it on. I really wonder what happened to this author pairing because they wrapped up this trilogy and then they just completely disappeared. Where have you gone, Lex Thomas? Someone start up a documentary on this. I need it! The Pigman. I don't remember much about this book, but what I do remember about it is that there are these two characters that meet this guy who supposedly has this really big impact on them and then the main characters don't evolve at all. They're frustrating from the beginning to the end and they don't evolve at all once they meet this really impactful figure in their life. Leviathan and Behemoth. I've kind of been keeping this for a stupid reason. I actually buddy read these books with one of my first internet friends and I was kind of thinking that if I get rid of these books I'll forget reading these books with them. How ridiculous is that? I have it documented right here right now that I read these with my first internet friend. I have four left so I'm gonna plow through these. Sky in the Deep. I was hyped for this book but then I was underwhelmed when I read it because honestly nothing really happened. I needed more from the characters and the plot. The atmosphere was nice and I liked the writing but overall it just was a letdown for me. The Spectacular Now. There are things that go down in this book that are not good and honestly, if anything, this book just kind of made me annoyed. Paper Things. I enjoyed this, but not enough to have it chill on my bookshelf for years to come. Nightfall. A super unique story that I really enjoyed, but isn't one that really stuck itself to me and isn't really a book that made my heart flutter. And I want to send it on in hopes that it finds someone and it makes their heart flutter. So those are all the books that I am getting rid of, at least the ones that I've read that I'm getting rid of. I don't really enjoy filming book unhauls for books that I haven't read yet, because usually when I get rid of books that I haven't even read yet, I'm just like, yeah, I lost interest. That's about it. It really does feel good to be getting rid 
rid of some books. It's gonna open up more space for books that I love to come in and fill those spaces. And that has me really excited. You guys should let me know down below in the comments if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them, especially if you have a differing opinion. I love hearing different opinions. Or just let me know down below in the comments a book that you've loved recently that I should pick up and fill one of the spots that's gonna open up soon when I get rid of all of these books. That's all I have for you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye. Oh.